Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. So at the end of last year, I reviewed six different Cabernet Sauvignons from Chile. To start off this year, I'm going to review eight different Sauvignon Blancs from Chile. This is a free sample provided to me, and I have no restrictions on how to review it. If you want to get a more detailed explanation of Chilean wine, then check out my first episode of the Cab series, episode 99, about the Miguel Torres Cordillera de los Cabernet Sauvignon. The link for, the, for that will be in the description below. This is the third wine in the series. It comes from Coile. That's how it's pronounced, not Coil. Uh, they are located in the San Fernando Dio, which is part of the Entre Cordilleras climatic zone in the Valle de Colchagua, or the Colchagua Valley. The wine, however, is from elsewhere. Let's get their background. These guys have been around for a while. They were founded in 1885 by Francisco Undaraga as uh, Viña Undaraga. They became the first Chilean wine to export to the U.S. in 1903. The winery stays in the family hands over the ensuing decades and expands its reach to more than 60 countries. Along the way, they also become a founding member of the Association of Wine Exporters and Bottlers. In 2006, they buy the Los Lingues farm. This area is also on the Los Lingues Dio and is located inside the San Fernando Dio, which is then inside the Colchagua Valley Dio. It's the main estate as far as I know, although I did find another site nearby that seems to have the same name. Then beginning in 2009, they start, they start the conversion to biodynamics. This particular wine appears to be from a vineyard they contract with rather than one that they own as it's not listed among their vineyards. As a matter of fact, this wine is not listed on their website at all. It very well may be a wine specifically meant for export to the U.S. Not much else after that. Let's get the stats of this wine. The 2021 Vigna Coile Costa La Flor Sauvignon Blanc suggested retail price is $18. It's from the Valle de San Antonio Dio, which is in the Valle de Leyes Dio. Strike that. Reverse it. Sauvignon Blanc, 100%, made with organic grapes. This is the first of only two wines in the whole series that, that we specify organic grapes. The soil is a yellow granite with quartz. Aging is four months over fine leaves. Total production is 2,500 cases, only about 30,000 bottles. Really, it's not a lot. The ABV is 13%. The pH is 3.14. It's been very intense. The TA is 5.28 grams per liter. Prob uh, given the pH, probably just tritatable, but it could be the total acidity. The RS is 1.5 grams per liter, and the free SO2 is 15 parts per million. Let's get into the wine. All right, I'm excited to try this wine. I will say, I know someone who tried the wine. They weren't really, they weren't really feeling it. But, you know, hey, we all have different palettes. Also, I'm going old school with the green screen versus the blue screen because this is blue. I'm blue, but anyway, um, versus green, which, you know, all this is like probably black right now. So this is, this is supposed to be actually wine number two. What, this is wine number two in the series, right? Uh, no, this is the third wine in the series, but I'm actually one, two, three. <laughs> this is actually uh, wine number five for me today. All right, along with the other two that have blue on their label. Anyway. Let's check out the wine. You know, these screw cap things make it so much easier to put the Corvin in and out. One of the other things about these screw caps, like they, they work really, really well. I mentioned it in another episode that you'll you'll see here in a little bit or in a few weeks um, that it could be three months, you know, two, three months before I actually get into these wines. But I've had a wine last five and a half months with really almost no noticeable difference. So um, I like the screw cap thing. And I think it's, it's, it's really good. Well, a little bit of coloration in there. Um, so, yeah. 
And these, you can get about 50 punctures in them. I, and I, I start off with like six or eight of these things. So I definitely haven't gotten 50 punctures in any one of them. So uh, they've lasted me for quite a while. Uh, fairly aromatic though. I feel it's like more of a floral thing. Actually, hold the floor. I'm gonna give myself just a little bit more. So I feel like I, I kind of under poured myself. Short poured myself, so to speak. It wasn't all the way to the half glass wine, half glass line on, on the uh, on the bottle, on the glass. I know you can't probably have a hard time telling, but if you look, these are my wine folly glasses. There's two lines in there, one for 75 milliliters, one for 150 milliliters. So 75 is half a glass and 150 is a full portion glass. And not that I really look at that all the time when I'm pouring, but I noticed it was below it. So yeah, it had more of a floral thing, almost like a sweet flower, orange blossom thing going on. I don't get a lot of green to it. Yeah, it's pretty closed on the nose. I know it's not a corked wine because of the screw cap. Um, and I don't think there's any oak that hit this. You technically can have a corked wine with a screw cap if the wine was aged in oak. It's possible, but like highly unlikely. I've never had one personally. Let's just taste it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you've got the jalapeno green pepper thing going on and like this spice, almost like a cumin. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm eating enchiladas right now. Like, really, I mean, this would be a great enchilada. The cheese enchilada, cheese enchilada thing. Spanish rice, double rice, no beans for me. Hmm. I like the wine. My friend, on the other hand, wasn't for them. That's okay. Um, it, it acts like it's something. It's so I think the reason why that person maybe wasn't so up on the wine is it doesn't quite act like a Sauvignon Blanc or not traditional Sauvignon Blancs that we're used to from other parts of the world. And that's totally okay. We don't need wine necessarily to act like a wine from another area, though we still need to be able to identify that it's that grape. So this one kind of doesn't act like a Sauvignon Blanc, but it does. It's it, a foreshadowing. It's kind of like one of the wines you're gonna see later on that I've already tasted that has this kind of complexity. I'm not saying this one has that level of complexity, but that wine was kind of like, huh, where would I put this? Like grape wise, this wine kind of acts like that too. So you have to stay, you'll have to watch all the, you just have to watch all the, the videos to figure out which one I talked about. Though so by the time you get to that video, you'll know it's the, that video is it. But it's between now and the last video. I don't really get the grapefruit that you normally would get from the Sauvignon Blanc. It's more of an orange thing. I would probably put this in a different category of wine but I do get that greenness, but it's really subtle. I get a little bit of pineapple. So I get a little bit of that Hawaiian pizza thing going on. And that normally is like, it's Sauvignon Blanc. If I get Hawaiian pizza, then I'm like, it's Sauvignon Blanc. Um, but it's more subtle and it's very delicious. This is definitely a wine I think uh, needs food. You could drink it on its own. It's light enough to do that. But I would probably put it with maybe not complex food. You know, I talked about enchiladas. I think it'd be great with that. Um, the cumin isn't as, as prominent that the spice component isn't as prominent as it was at the beginning, but I tell, I mean, I, that's all I'm thinking about is having cheese enchiladas, you know, with some Polvano peppers in there and, and, and Spanish rice. I, that's all I'm thinking about having. Like I, like I haven't had lunch yet. It's, it's, um, it's 12, 16, uh, right now. So during the day and I'm, I'm ready for some lunch. I got two more wines to do. Um, like I'm feeling like. I was just going to do fast food today, but I, I, I kind of feel like I should go have Mexican food or de, do takeout and, and bring it back or whatever. But my lunch needs to be an alcohol-free lunch because I got, I got wines from Uruguay to do. But I can see this with like some chicken dishes, some pork dishes, pork dishes, chicken dishes, maybe like with a poblano, uh, like a poblano sauce, like a cheese sauce or a poblano white sauce type of thing going on, on top of the chicken or on top of the pork. Again, the Mexican thing going on here, um, or Mexican style wine, I mean, uh, food. Uh, what else could you do with this? I mean, you could do other things with that, but I, I like the wine and I really would love to have this with some, with some 
food like that. So it'll be like, um, you know, whenever I had that food, I'm like, I'm going to pull, I'm going to reach for this wine for that. Super delicious. I like it. And it's how much again? It's like not expensive. Like, what was the price on this? 18 bucks? Yeah. $18? I'll, I'll go with that. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's delicious. All right. So that's going to do it for today's show. If you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe. And then tell your friends. And I finished all the wine. We'll see you next time.